co-host, and that's Alex Coffey. Alex, thanks for joining us here to wrap up the week. And uh, we did open slightly higher this morning, but I, I used the, the, the term earlier, cautiously higher, and then most of the indices faded after that. Um, but it looks like kind of another narrow session, um, and it seems almost like that's kind of been the theme of the week, Alex, where we get an opening move and then the market just kind of moves sideways for the week. But um, what's your takeaway so far with what we're seeing in today's action? It's along those lines, Scott. I would use the word, uh, I don't want to use the word fragile, that might be too extreme, but maybe uh, that this market's rallied on somewhat shaky ground as of late and there's a little bit of uncertainty or probably better said a lack of conviction in the moves that we've seen. So I would describe today is more of a kind of reversal of the recent moves that we've seen on a very uh, you know minor basis you don't see the russell making back all the ground you don't see the nasdaq giving back all of its gains but you see gold lower after uh, several sessions uh, working its way higher you see the bond market starting to sell off a little bit after several weeks of rallying uh, and you see that really primarily this is expressed in the russell and the nasdaq you see russell outperformance of the nasdaq 100 so scott I'm probably not buying into it too much today as it's just one day of kind of almost a, a pause of the recent trading trends. Uh, but it is uh, interesting to note that it's almost across the board. Uh, really, if you look at the recent performance of, of many of these assets, almost all of them are moving in the direction opposite of their recent trend. You know, you mentioned uh, two of those, those indices, NASDAQ and Russell, and you're absolutely right. That's probably one of the big takeaways this week is that continuation of a weaker Russell. Now today Russell's up a little bit, but looking back on the week, Alex, the S&P 500's down, well, not much, a four, a four tenths of a percent. The Dow Jones is up like one tenth of a percent. NASDAQ down maybe a quarter of a percent. So very small moves for the, those majors. But the Russell, even though it's up today, uh, Alex, is down 3.75 percent on the week. That's a pretty good move to the downside. Um, is that also one of your t kind of takeaways as we wrap up this week, Alex? Yeah, I would say so. And Scott, I think it's important to know, you know, why has this happened? Because uh, one of the things that we've noticed as of late, and we'll, we'll get into the economic data that came out uh, this morning in just a moment, but economic data uh, in terms of inflation, economic recovery, and of course, the Federal Reserve's recent commentary has shifted a little bit. It's not quite all so optimistic. Doesn't mean that it's uh, pessimistic, doesn't mean that it's worrisome yet, but it's not uh, painting the same picture that it was maybe three, four, five months ago, which led if we have that chart back up of the index performance, you're going to see a major outperformance of the Russell 2000 to start 2021. That was because the economic timeline for recovery was very, very uh, positive. We were pulling things up. It was coming ahead of schedule. Economic surprise was very, very high and positive. As time has gone on, that has dissipated a little bit. Inflation uh, has become more and more concerning. The Fed has kind of backed off on its language as of late just a little bit. And uh, some have even described their recent move as a little bit hawkish in terms of uh, maybe describing a timeline that is a little bit closer to the present than was previously suggested. And so all of these things considered... Uh, have led to kind of concerns about the economic recovery. And with that, uh, the Russell 2000 is re repriced a little bit. And so along those lines, though, with that money that was raised from potentially selling some of those small cap and cyclically tied sectors, it had to find a new home. Uh, with concerns around inflation, Scott, holding it in cash or buying into bonds, this didn't necessarily sit well with many. Some maybe have a uh, opposed, uh, are opposed to buying gold because of its kind of heartbreaking nature at times. And so it's like uh, everyone's almost at consensus that the place to put your money in a time of uncertainty, the new flight to quality, as I describe it, is these mega cap companies, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Alphabet. And of course, Amazon's slipping a little bit uh, over recent days, but those mega cap companies are seen with their massive cash positions, their strong balance sheets and strong market positions to be somewhat resilient in, in really almost any uh, uh, economic time. Well, all right, Alex, let's turn our attention to economic data. You just mentioned uh, it was a, quite a week. We had quite a bit of data, but uh, today we had two numbers that I think were pretty closely followed, one being retail sales. Now, we know in the past, Alex, this one has kind of moved up and down with the stimulus payments. We know it was up in April because of that, but it was down in May. I think the expectation was that would continue here in June, but I'm not so sure that was the case. What were the results of uh, 
Yeah, we'll yeah, describe this th this one here, Scott, is lukewarm because on the headline basis, it's a nice beat, and it is, uh, of course, a change in direction. Expecting a four tenths uh, of a percent slide, it comes in with a six tenths of a percent gain. But there was a prior revision for four tenths lower, and so we we basically adjusted lower all of last month's readings, and then beat this month slightly, and so. I look at it as a lukewarm report. It is, uh, you know, obviously a, a positive uh, update here on the economy, uh, but maybe a little bit more on the lukewarm side uh, than, than, you know, jumping for joy. All right, well, we've got an idea of the consumer and where they stand right now. Let's talk about the consumer sentiment. Now, that also came out today for the month of July. This was a, a preliminary number, so it's only you know, the first half of, of July. And again, this is, this is University of Michigan. 600 households, I think they survey. Um, what was the takeaway from the state of the consumer uh, looking forward, Alex? Yeah, it's important to look at this one. I think this is one that we like to cover uh, on a monthly basis, Scott, uh, every Friday that it comes out. And my key takeaway was that the, uh, the estimates and the, and the actual are, are going in different directions. You can see across the board pretty substantial misses. And that's the story uh, in, one, in one way. But I would also note that the uh, expectations were for this to actually improve across the board. And so you see the overall sentiment goes from 85 to 80, but they were expecting 86 and a half. Uh, expectations, 83 to 78, 88 to 84 for current conditions. And you can see the expectations were for, again, improvements there. The inflation expectation story continues to uh, basically ramp up as inflation is becoming more and more embedded in consumer behavior now on a house buying uh, behavioral attitude portion of this study where they're basically asking you know how you feel about buying a home it was the lowest since 1982 with the highest number of survey participants citing home prices as the reason for uh, their decision that's the highest ever since this survey has been uh, been around now they also look at durables and, and vehicles and the aggregate if you kind of looked at an average of all of those kind of buying attitudes that they look at it was the lowest they've ever seen on record and so I think of course this is just one kind of soft data piece it's a survey uh, it could be reactionary to an experience that some of these you know had when they were asked but uh, it's starting to not jive with what we're seeing in the equity market itself basically trading at all-time highs and so uh, if we're seeing some concerns from the consumer about their, their, their future and their buying uh, appetite, uh, that could be a little bit concerning for equities going forward as we know how important the U.S. consumer is. But uh, as we just talked about with the retail sales, it's not showing up yet, at least in the June data. Uh, we'll see if it does start to next month in July. Okay, Alex, thanks for helping us break down today's economic data. We have just two minutes left, Alex. Let's turn our attention to a couple stocks on your radar. Mm -hmm. Stocks on the move today, one being Moderna, M-R-N-A, and the other one being Alcoa. Uh, what's, uh, what caught your attention with these two symbols, Alex? The Moderna story is interesting. It's going to be added to the S&P 500, and uh, we know what that means. Many fund managers are going to have to scoop up these shares. Uh, a lot of uh, you know, basically passive money will now find investment into Moderna. And uh, some of the surprise uh, is maybe indicated by the 8.3% rally that we're seeing on this news. The Alcoa uh, story is a little bit more interesting. This is an earnings-related name, and I'm just going to read you some of the headlines around this earnings, Scott. Alcoa posts easy quarter two earnings beat and sees continued strength in quarter three. Alcoa sets record for highest quarterly net income in EPS. Alcoa strong quarter two beat prompts Citigroup's upgrade to buy. And so you hear those headlines, strong earnings, strong guidance, an upgrade from Citi, you'd assume stock higher. But that's not the case, Scott. And I think that's the, the key reason I'm focused on this name. Of course, it's just one name in the several you know, thousands of names that we're going to hear over the next few weeks in terms of earnings. But if this is any indication of how the market is uh, digesting earnings announcements, I think investors should be cautiously optimistic around uh, earnings because while they're expected to be strong for many companies, if they're already pricing in that strength, it can lead to a buy the rumor, sell the news type of a scenario. I think that's what we're getting out of Alcoa today. So more of a, a highlight, not a red flag, but maybe just a, a cautious uh, alarm sounding out of Alcoa because the numbers were very strong, but it wasn't enough to sustain any type of movement higher here uh, this morning, Scott. 
All right, some good takeaways there. Alcoa down two and three quarter percent today um, based on your breakdown there. Moderna having a great day, up 8% on the day. And looking back for the year, Moderna is up, uh, if you go back 52 weeks, Alex, it's up about 250%. So it's definitely been on the move. Well, Alex, we've got to wrap it up there. Thanks for helping us uh, break down today's data and put this week in perspective for our viewers. Have a great weekend, uh, Alex. We look forward to having you back on Your First Trade. All right, coming up next, I'm joining Michael Keeley. And as I mentioned, we're wrapping up Greek Week. If you didn't follow us this week, we'll do a quick review of each of the individual Greeks and then talk about how they work combined to affect options pricing. Stay with us. We'll break it down after this short break. This is my headquarters. This is where I trade and manage my portfolio. Since I added futures, I have access to the oil markets and gold markets. Okay. I'm plugged into equities, trade confirmed. And I have global access 24-7, meaning I can do what I need to do. Then I can focus on what I want to do. Visit your online broker today to learn more.